Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I'm doing a little bit of work here on the studio, so it's kind of a mess here on my desk because I've got these new monitors and stuff, and I'm trying to get it set up so when I bring the Alienware down here, it'll be uh, more advantageous, so we'll be able to do more things here when I'm here. And with the new computer that I'm putting in at home, it's going to be even better. We won't have to worry about it crashing and overheating when we do those live streams that are literally all day Sunday. So we have the whole debate about Dak Prescott on getting rid of him, which I, I find just amazing because, you know, we're, we're still circling the drain with the same issues that we've had years ago. Let me, let me give you a case in point here. This was before Dak Prescott's last contract. This was the cow turd. says there's a deal to be made with Dak Prescott. He believes it's going to get done. He's going to make $35 million a year. Cowboys and Dak, and a lot of people are denying the $45 million. You know, it's, it's PR spin. But he's going to make $35 million a year. Uh, you know I don't. That, I don't, that doesn't work for me, but I'll just say this. Dak Prescott, according to Fox Bet, is worth four points more per game than Andy Dalton. That seems fair. More than a field goal. Of course, the contract will be ten times more than Andy Dalton. Make of it what you will. $35 million for Dak. There's two reasons it concerns me. One, his entire career. He's had a top three offensive line and a top two running back in the league and above average weapons. I've never seen him struggle oh wait i have tyron smith got hurt he was terrible zeke was out he wasn't very good pre amari cooper not special the times i've seen him not have everything right in support he has struggled and last year he struggled against good teams everybody's good in life when you're a trust fund kid you're the only child you get the time you get the attention you get life's way easier what if you're one of five kids struggling to grab the final piece of pizza? With Dak, his life has been trust fund kid. It's been bad. See, <laughs> see, this is where you have to. Th this was four, uh, three years ago, four years ago. Now we're saying that Dak Prescott is a trust fund kid. Dak, Dak Prescott was a long ways away from being a trust fund kid. He was raised by his mother and Uncle Philip. Shout out to my buddy Uncle Philip. Trust fund kid? No, bro. Sorry. That's some just straight up bullshit. But be that as it may, the funny thing here is as we get ready to take on the Cleveland Browns, which I think is actually really um, good because. We've gone through this whole thing now that he is. It, it, it's funny how Colin, Colin Cowherd is sitting there saying, oh, well, he's going to get, four, you know, 10 times or whatever more than Andy Dalton. But before he was saying that Andy Dalton and Dak Prescott were the same guy. Now we're just like, oh, OK, that's an, OK. All right. Whatever. But Deshaun Watson is in a long list of guys that we always heard that were compared to with Dak Prescott. Here's what's amazing is because after the 2020 season, everybody sang the praise of Deshaun Watson. The Deshaun Watson, he's a top five quarterback. And when you looked at the numbers, when, let me give you the numbers of what he had that season. 70% completion percentage, 4,823 yards. That's a lot of yards. Although Dak did have one year that was higher than that, 4,902, one yard short of Tony, record, Tony Romo's single season record. 33 TDs and seven interceptions. Remarkable numbers. But can I point out that the team was 4-12? and 12? Because we always get this knock on Dak Prescott. Oh, well, it was garbage time. Well, if you're 4-12, and 12, chances are you were behind on all those games and throwing a lot more. So was that because the team was bad and losing that you were throwing all these against soft zones like they accused Dak Prescott? Because he ended up getting a fully guaranteed $230 million deal to go to Cleveland. 
which to me is a lot more than 160 million. That's double. This is what they used to say. Because the reason I bring up Deshaun Watson because they play each other. And this is the tale of two different quarterbacks here because you have to look at it and say, if Cleveland could have moved on from Deshaun Watson, they probably would have. With the last two years having 14 TDs and nine interceptions and knowing that they have a $73 million hit fully guaranteed next year and the year after. And they keep restructuring and kicking it down the road and I guess hoping that something will work out. But listen to this right here. Does Dak deserve the same deal as Deshaun Watson? Multiple teams in the NFL, L.A. Rams with Jared Goff, Kansas City with Mahomes, Philadelphia with Carson Wentz, and Houston with Deshaun Watson, who have paid their star quarterbacks early. And in two cases, Deshaun Watson and Carson Wentz, we've got major injury history with both. And yet Dak is franchise tag. This is the deal mostly that Dak wanted. What is really interesting about Dak and Deshaun Watson. Now, obviously, Dak's been in the league longer than Deshaun Watson. Obviously, Deshaun was a higher draft pick than Dak Prescott. But let's take the last two years. So they both had some years in the league. What is shocking is how similar shocking. they are. Here we Deshaun's go. Deshaun's won a few more games. They both have 52 touchdowns and around 20 picks. They both complete about 66, 67 percent of their throws. And one's passer rating is 100 and another is 98.4. It's the same guy. There's a big difference, though. Deshaun Watson's done that despite his surroundings. Dak has accomplished that because of his surroundings. This is why I never bought into all the Dallas reporters claiming that Dak was going to get big money. He has had a top two offensive line since he entered the league, a top one or two running back, a top three or four receiving core. His head coach always been an offensive guy. And as much as we roll our eyes at Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, they generally draft pretty well and have elite players my entire life. Dak and Deshaun's numbers okay. are... All right, so that was three years ago, okay? And how's that working out right now? Because the funny thing on this is, it's always been, you know, it was, remember it was, you know, Carson Wentz is a Maserati. Dak Prescott, he's just a Corvette. I don't know if you've seen the new Corvettes. I think they're pretty fly. I'd take a new Corvette, you know, American-made company, as opposed to that Maserati. It probably costs less to keep it on the road, too. We had Deshaun Watson, top five. Dak Prescott couldn't carry his jockstrap. No. And he's not doing too real good, is he? Didn't he just get in, come back from another shoulder injury again? Carson Wentz. He's a backup in Kansas City, right? Okay. You remember Sam Darnold? We used to have people saying Sam Darnold is better than Dak Prescott. Sam Darnold, he does have the start, looks like, in Minnesota, but he's doing the NFL tour of we're desperate for a quarterback. Let's we'll get that guy. It's literally like you're playing dodgeball and you've gone through everybody and it's like, well, I'll take that guy. Remember when Kyler Murray, oh my God, Kyler Murray, he can do things Dak Prescott can't. Justin Herbert, who's gone downhill the last two seasons. It's just funny that the guy that they literally said won't be around doesn't deserve anything to get paid. I don't think Deshaun Watson's going to get another mega deal or be in a position to be the highest paid again. I don't think Carson Wentz will be. I don't think Kyler Murray will be. I don't think Russell Wilson will be. It's funny because we had all these different quarterbacks and they keep saying, oh, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. And the funny thing is, is when we talk about playoff records, Sean Watson doesn't have any playoff wins. He has one good season. One. And they automatically said he's a top five guy. 
See, this is the bullshit that you get with all the talking heads and, you know, skewing the numbers and giving you just flat out bullshit. That's what they do. And it makes you sick to your damn stomach. What you have seen from Dak Prescott with the ineptitude of the Dallas Cowboys not recognizing that it's advantageous for us to pay the guys early before we're at the get, up against the wall to treat them like you actually care about them and don't pay injured freaking players. Don't do it. Don't draft in the second round. Guys with freaking issues thinking you're going to get a first rounder. Those things aren't done by Dak Prescott. Yet, he's the one that takes the bullets for the mistakes. When you say, we don't have cash, and you're sitting here with $13 million of dead money for Michael Gallup after paying $26 million on top of it for two seasons of 800 yards, 850 yards combined, Dak is not the problem. The front office is. I can't, well, let me rephrase that. There's enough blame to go around, including to Dak. But let's get off of this whole thing that it's just one freaking guy. Kansas City. Does Kansas City win that Super Bowl if their defense doesn't get that stop? Does he? In fact, does Kansas City get that Super Bowl if their defense wasn't the third-rated defense in the NFL last year? Because when I hear about Pat Mahomes has a chance to be a three-peat, I say he didn't have a chance to be a repeater if it wasn't for his defense. I'm sure I'm going to get crucified for this. But it is what it is, and it don't matter because this is what they always do. Peace out.